Anything I write here could be considered, maybe fairly, puerile. How can any words I speak here do justice to the daunting document that is Cloud Landsman's 1985 film Shower? Why did I want to discuss Shower on this channel? Frankly primarily because I was interested in analysing and studying it as an act of film composition, to consider it as a production, to assess the decisions made for the documentary itself. Inevitably, this would include Address, the film's enormous reputation in the canon of documentary cinema and as a foretold undertaking which all must experience if they are to enter the annals of cinephile credibility. Shoah is known amongst younger inductees into, into the film snob internet world as that nine-hour Holocaust documentary which consists entirely of contemporary interviews of witnesses, and even some perpetrators, of the Nazi final solution. Shoah was famously referred to by Roger Ebert as an act of witness. It certainly feels like one, unavoidably due to its mode of presentation. Ebert perhaps even more famously refused to name Shoah as his top film of 1985 due to its being apparently inappropriate for comparison with the other candidates, although he seemingly acceded to Siskel's claim that it was the greatest film of that year. There's almost a reputation out there that this film must be considered something transcendent, an unsurpassed accomplishment in cinema history, a default edition near, or at, the top of every greatest film list to be compiled from now forevermore. I'm not even disputing or arguing against this esteem placed upon Shoah. Although I am interested in ensuring others understand why exactly this is the case. Why Shoah has been considered uniquely more than a film. It's because Shoah's affect is inseparable to that of its namesake. To make an opinion on the affect of Cloud Landsman's 1985 documentary Shoah is to make an opinion on one's own affect toward the Nazi Holocaust itself. There's an implication about one's own humanity at play here, and I'm not at all suggesting that those who lauded Shoah did so as a postured performance. I believe they did so because of how transparent this documentary made the individual's suffering experience during the Holocaust. Their reverence towards Shoah was likely pure, unadulterated sincerity of emotion. They would have been lying to state that they didn't consider it one of the most, or the most, affecting film experience of their lives. Probably the most studied genocide in human history, I think there was, and still is, something to be said for how desensitised the developed world became to the idea of the Nazi Holocaust. It is one thing to consider the things that occurred in our species past, and assume that things and human behaviour were simply different then, and that nothing like that could happen now. Here, hearing the accounts from those who suffered, we receive a more detailed understanding as to how this crime came into being, and from the few perpetrators questioned, why it was even initially considered. The survivors who are interviewed detail how their society chose to make sense and justify the treatment of the Jews in occupied Europe. They describe a society obsessed by a fervour, who had completely dehumanised them as an other, and the cause of all problems facing the nation. Provocatively then, the film, deceptively in at least one case, has former Nazi officials admitting that the massacres of Jews were taken up with bureaucratic initiative by Hitler's underlings, dispelling an image we may have of thousands of forced Nazis, tearful gases, or whatever the hell. Most controversially, to this day an extremely sensitive issue was Landsman's decision to have older Polish citizens admit their complicity or willful ignorance toward the persecution of Jews in Nazi-occupied Poland at the time. I'm not going to touch this for too long, although I'll just say that the question of how could people just so callously let this happen is answered and you won't like what you hear. It would be a statement on the film community's lack of humanity if it didn't at least instinctively place Shoah as one of the most, if not the most, important films of all time. So that all being said, I'm not necessarily dismissing the arguments of those who claim that this does not automatically invite a film, any film, to be considered the most impressive ever made. I'm trying to illuminate why people have and do. Cloud Landsman's iconic choice was to use little, if any, archival footage and instead opt for present-day footage of survivors narrating their accounts, recordings of certain sites today, and questioning what some of those responsible have to say about why this tragedy occurred. Let's consider what the film could have been otherwise. A collage of traumatising violence, a clinical historical recount, a visual side-by-side -side comparison of the then and the now. I think it was wise that Landsman stayed rooted in the present. He wanted to understand why the Holocaust remained a relevant, wasn't resonant wound in recent history, and so spent 11 years attempting to learn, and subsequently educate his viewers, as to why it continued to inform the lived existence of the Jewish people. Initially, Landsman had been commissioned by the Israeli government to direct a documentary about the Holocaust from, quote, the viewpoint of the Jews, unquote. 
While the Israeli government eventually withdrew their funding, this appears to have remained Landsman's intent, creatively. I have read that Landsman was not willing to try and understand why Adolf Hitler did what he did, and bemoaned attempts to do so as potentially inherently unethical. With this in mind, it becomes evident as to what Shoa is not trying to do. Shoa is not trying to answer the question of why or how the Holocaust happened. Raoul Hilberg did so sufficiently, and is interviewed extensively in the film itself. It is rather attempting to communicate what it meant to those it was enacted against, and to those who, while it's not causing it, enabled it. The Israeli backer who had individually devised the idea for the documentary to Landsman is said to have stated he ought to make a film, not to make a film, quote, about the Shoah, but a film that is the Shoah, unquote. That descriptor is key. The Holocaust not as a chapter in human history, but as a signifier in Jewish culture that had lasted, permeated, still bled to the point when the, they commenced the production and upon the film's release. And today, frankly. And yet, in its attempt to communicate a resonance specific to Jewish individuals, Landsman's film transcended itself into one of the most resolutely human, whatever that might mean, ever realised. Shoah is about death, and it intrinsically, by intention or no, defines humanity in contrast to inhumanity. By humanity, I'm referring to the spiritual concept of one's humanity, when used as a distinguishing factor between our species and the rest of the animal kingdom. Where is your humanity, use of the word humanity? Then what is inhumanity? The nearest, and still rather crude, way I could describe it would be to refer to inhumanity as a desire to gain pleasure or sustenance at the expense or as a direct result of the suffering of other human beings. The way the Nazi regime had enriched an animalistic animosity toward perceived others, this immensely incentivized the actors of the state to willingly enact some of the most culturally scarring actions in recorded human history. When I watch Shoah now, I feel, afterward, a certain clarity which I am disappointed that I never can continually realise about the evils of malice, of rage, of hatred. The Holocaust did not occur overnight. It was a process which had been growing since 1933, an inevitable conclusion to the demonization of the other. As a Catholic, one wonders what the point of Christ was if events such as these, in one of the most Christian regions in the world at that time, could so have occurred. Was the message ineffective, or worse, was it partially responsible? With all due respect to Landsman, who decried attempts to understand the Nazis' brand of evil, I would like to air a brief despair. That which motivated the Nazi Holocaust was burning in our species long before Christ, and long before the Jews, and long before the first farms in Suma. It persists today, in countries all across the globe, persecution, demonization, cruelty, and dismissals toward another's humanity. Why? For one's power, pleasure, or sustenance. Why does our species bother wearing clothes for any other reason than to stay warm? There is a whole encyclopedia of sensitive issues which I am concerned about treading on here, so I would like to remind everyone that I am a mere layperson. I am not making any political statements, at least not deliberately, I am not trying to act as a definitive source of historical education, although I would point you toward the great historian Raoul Hilberg, and I am not requesting or encouraging anyone to do anything specifically, possibly because I feel as though this film, and the takeaway from it, speaks for itself. I consider Cloud Landsman's show to be one of the most admirable film undertakings in human history, and one of the very best ever made. One of the most powerful testaments to human communication, Landsman directed a film which emphasizes the lived and communicated history of human experience rather than the clinical documentation of artifacts and sources. And of course, without dismissing or deriding that discipline of history, even endorsing its vital necessity, certainly via interviewing Raoul Hilberg extensively throughout its runtime, the film considers the Holocaust not just as an event committed by and against people, as though Homo sapiens were an abstracted species, but an event committed by us and against us. Not a crime perpetrated against and by the scientific designation of human beings, but one executed by that higher conception that is, humanity. However seriously one can still take such pretentious hubris after sitting down and viewing 1985's Shoah.